Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another Blender 2.8 video editing tutorial. In this one, we're going to look at speed control, how to uh, how to speed up your video. Um, does, Blender doesn't work too well with slowing video down. It does do it, but it's not great. Um, but this is great for like time lapse videos and things like that. So let's get right into that. Okay, for this one, we're primarily going to focus on video, uh, video speed control because audio speed control is a whole nother whole nother monster but we'll get to that in the video right after this one so for now we're just going to get rid of the audio clips i'm going to left click on that and just hit delete on the keyboard and then click erase strips and that gets rid of the audio file so to speed up a video file it's very very simple you're just going to go to or well, you got to click on your video file you're going to go to add and then go to effect strip and click speed control and then if you go over here into the right panel, you will go down to um, the speed control, which is right under the effect strip because you're on the effect strip. So you can't just go on the multiply speed. It doesn't work well. It does work, but it doesn't work well. So we're going to uncheck the stretch to input strip length, and we're going to go use as speed. So we'll click this first one that says speed factor, and you always want this set to one because you want it set to the original then you can multiply the speed however you'd like. Um, if you look at the video right now, it's playing normal speed. Just a video walking. Now if I multiply it, we can go as fast as we'd like. Uh, five is a good one. It makes a pretty big difference. So if we play, you'll see that it's much, much faster. Okay, so the strip stays the same length, which is problematic because obviously you probably have more than one clip maybe not I don't know but if we go if we scrub along here right clicking on the the uh, scrub bar here and pull it we can see where the end of the video is if we just kind of finesse it right there and then on our keyboard we can use the arrow keys to get to that last last frame so you go black there video there so you want to go right when it goes to black and then back one to where you see video then you're gonna left click on the arrow right here at the end of the strip and your strip stayed here so if you hit sh hold shift on your keyboard and then hit s at the same time it'll drag it right back to where the end of that clip is and then if you just click out here somewhere left click uh, do go back to the beginning which is a jump to the first frame and then hit play you'll see that it'll play straight through all the way to the end and it will end exactly where you need it to end Now, if you have a time-lapse video like this, and you're going to have multiple video files in one, this is one of the times I highly suggest making a meta strip, because this speed strip is completely dependent on this original video clip. And if you try to crossfade and things, you're going to have to crossfade the, the speed strip, which becomes a problem. So if you click on this one, shift, left click on this one, and go to strip, and then go clear up to make meta strip. Of course, there's control G on the keyboard you could use, but we're just gonna go make meta strip. And then it ties those strips together. Everything is still exactly the same, but it's a good idea to do this so you, got, you have those two tied together and they won't move around independently then when you're doing other things. Now remember, I had said in a previous video, if you make a meta strip, it's a good idea to make sure you have everything set first. Now, while you can undo a meta strip, once you get other things involved in it and you have things overlapping, once you if you would go in and unmeta it again, you're going to cause yourself a whole lot of problems. So just meta strip it, make sure it's edited first, and then make meta strip, and you're good to go. And now you have your super fast time lapse video. So in the next one, we're going to look at how to match the audio to that time lapse video, and. Uh, this this happens outside of blender unfortunately because blender doesn't work very well doing audio it doesn't really do audio at all except for your original audio so we'll look at how we can do that and uh so i hope you'll come back and we'll we'll look at that together i want to thank you guys for watching as always and we'll see you in the next video